Hello, and welcome back to Minecraft How To. This episode is going to be all about the mechanics of all doubling and mods that can provide this feature. Vanilla Minecraft, you normally just get one ingot per one ore. All doubling adds the mechanic where you can get double, triple, quadruple, or even quintuple the amount of, amount of ingots that you get from a single ore. It may seem like getting double or triple the amount of ingots would be a good thing, but as you get deeper into the mods, you'll realise that this can be could actually be quite a lot less than you really need. So this is a really good mechanic to know and to start off with the early game. Some of the mods make it really easy to add in the ore doubling. And I'll show you some of these in a moment. What I'm going to show you though is all early game. And only things where it requires some form of power. And I'll get into that uh, into power in a moment. But for now, let's get started. Okay, let's make the assumption that we've just come back from the wrong hard mining trip. And we've got ourselves up some coal, uh, some coal and some iron ore. In the vanilla. We go, we place the, we cook, uh, we smelt it up. It's just for example, we'll cook one here. Normally, of course, you'd put your stack in, you'd walk away, come back later once it's all finished. But in this case, we'll just sit here and wait. And we get one iron ingot. So one coal equals one iron ingot. And the piece of coal that we place in there will continue burning until it runs out. Which for one single iron ingot is rather wasteful. This is where the ore doubling mechanics come in. Let's start with a mod with industrial craft. Industrial craft runs runs on a power source called EU or energy units. first thing you'll need is a generator. This is a very basic generator, which takes coal. Let's put a few in there. Takes coal, and it powers an internal buffer. To transport the, uh, the energy, or the EU, out of the generator, you use cables. These cables are then used to, to power the various machines. For ore doubling, you would need a macerator. As you can hear, it will now fill up the macerator. And you can see in the macerator that a little energy icon shows how much power is available. We don't, in this case, need to go to fuel, because the fuel is coming from our generator. All we need to do it is place in one iron ingot, or one iron ingot. Noise. And at the end of the process, we now have two crushed iron ore. So for one iron ore, we ended up with two crushed iron ore. These can be smelted up anything, but continue on with the industrial craft mod, we can smelt it up into the electric furnace. Once again, this also runs on EU, so you will need your generator connected with cables. If we replace our two crushed iron ore into the furnace, we get two iron ingots. So you'll need your furnace generates. crushed ore, which then when smelted, can be converted to one ingot. Because it generates two, it doubles the amount you get from your ore. Another cool thing about industrial crafts method is the induction smelting. You saw how slow the electric furnace is, 
the induction smelter is also just about as slow, if not slower, when processing one item. And we're actually running, you can see that the little electricity icon shown here is actually a power. So we need to give this one power. So let's split this up into a little bit smaller area. Let's give it a seven. Should be enough. And you'll notice that it is now 1% complete. Very slow machine for doing a single item. However, if you give it a redstone signal, and we take this out, you'll notice that the 4% it keeps going up, 5%, 6%, 7%, and so on and so forth. As long as it's got a redstone signal and power, it will keep going up. The higher the percentage, the faster it will be able to smelt items. While I've been waiting for the induction furnace to power up large percent, I've crossed up some more iron ore. And we can quickly see how fast it process. You put the eight in there plus one of those, and you can you can see the hundred percent it goes much faster. But of course, if we turn the lever off, it'll now start going down. You can also recrush the normal iron ingots back into their original dust. Let's move on to the next one. This one, this mod is from Ender.io. Ender.io is a reasonably recent mod, but it does have some very cool features. For example, we start off with a sterling generator. A sterling generator works the same as the generator from Industrial Craft 2, in that you can power up, place a number of items into the generator, and it will generate power. You can upgrade the machine to make it faster. As shown here, if we turn off the end of the eye, it will make uh, just by a double click air capacitor, will make it 2.7 times efficient. And on tap, will make it 5.3 times faster. These upgrades apply to all the machines, as well as some of the other features that I'll show you in a moment. But as you can see, it's burning and storing power. This mod, and all the other mods I was showing you, run on a power source called Redstone Flux, or RF. Which means that all the machines will be able to connect to each other using the same cabling, or different cabling. But in this case, I'm going to use the native cables for this moment. So, if we place some NDIO cable, and we place a sagmal, the sagmal provides the all double mechanics. Here. As you can see, it also takes a capacitor, it has power, and if we place our iron ore at the top, we will get two pulverized iron. Pulverized iron could be cooked up in your energy furnace or your induction smelter, or you can make an alloy smelter, which will let you cook up your thing. It will cook three things at once, and can be used for some of the other more advanced items inside the game. And there we go, we have two iron ingots from the one iron ore. Another cool feature of Ender O is you can automatically output to various size. For example, clicking the configure IO button or the little cog here, and holding down left will let you rotate the item. Clicking the left mouse button will change the mode from pull, push, push and pull, disabled, 
and none. None is the default setting, which means you pipe things in. Pull will pull items out of the connected inventory. For example, if we were to leave this here, it would pull items out of the alloy smelter. Push will push items into the alloy smelter. So, with that setting there, we can place in our iron ore. And you'll note that it will automatically be pushed into the alloy smelter to cook. This could be really useful if you want to make a, if you want to automate your process a little bit. It's even better in that because it can pull, you can make a chest, which we'll make over here. You can make a chest place it on top, tell it to pull, and then place your, let's say we put half of our ore in there, it will just automatically take it, <coughs> stick it in there, so you can put various types of ores in here, <coughs> and automatically eject them, push it, putting this one on push, would then push it into the connected inventory, allowing for a very quick automated system. In addition, the cables only need to take up one block. So we could place an item onto it, also along here, and you'll know that it connects into the same block. And we can also hide blocks using conduit facades. which can be made to look like anything. For example, if we place this here, we now have a birch wood flank power line. This makes integrating the cables into your base much better. The next mod we're gonna look at is the mod Mechanism. Mechanism has a similar concept for power in that it uses jewels However, the jewels are compatible with redstone flasks. Mechanism is a sided, does require sided uh, items. So, you will dig your wrench to change the direction to face where you need it. You can connect mechanism basic universal cables or more advanced cables. The enrichment chamber is the ore doubling mechanic allowing you to place items in there and it will create a double up item which is iron dust it has an energized smelter which will convert the iron dust into iron ingots Much like Ender.io, this mod does allow for upgrades for speed and for energy, and can be configured to take things from various sides, as well as eject. So in this case, it's configured to take input from the red side, the red side being this slot here, and it will output, if there was something there, on the blue side. If we were to look at this machine here, which I've already pre-configured, it is set to auto eject, which is this button here. It'll outside, uh, output the blue side, or the output side, and it can take input from the chest above, or items above, as the input. So, as an example, if we cook up some more iron ore, This time, it'll automatically eject it 
into this Melkonic store. As you can see, it's burning in the background. And it is now cooking up the two to make iron ingots. Lastly today, we will take a look at one of the more common mods that people use, which is thermal expansion and thermal dynamics. This mod has been around for a little while. It has steam dynamos, which much like our generators, take an input of coal. However, it also does require a little bit extra. It requires water. The water, which is here, will create steam. You can then plug this into flux ducts, which transmit the power. Once again, you will need to possibly wrench the power. You can, the ore doubling mechanic is provided by the pulverizer. And this machine does have different locations. You can see a blue, a red, and a yellow. These can be set much like the other machines in the configuration, with each side reflecting a color. But as you can see, this one makes pulverized iron. If we, uh, we can place down a redstone furnace, and we can cook our pulverized iron. And it also has a configuration option. So, if we were to configure this to be blue, and over here, we want the red side to be to the side here. I don't think that's red. Now, if we place our iron in the, our iron ore there, it will auto eject to be it's melted up from the redstone furnace. Much like the other machines we've discussed today, the thermal expansion machines also provide an augmentation tab which allows you to upgrade the machine further. By default, it comes with the integrated server motor, which allows it to push the items directly out, a redso control, and the ability to control what side things come in. By removing these, you can see that the various tabs will disappear off the interface. This one here, of course, you can't see because it's part of this tab here. You can upgrade the machine to get additional slots, or you can take one of these out and replace it with a energy augmentation, an efficiency augmentation, and they can support up to three levels of upgrade. In addition, you can see how much power is being used, more information about the device, and a quick tutorial about how the device works. Now, as I said earlier, most of the RF connection types can be connected to. For example, if we place an energy conduit from n o followed by a universal cable from the mechanism, you'll note that they can. A leadstone flux duct will also connect. However, IC2, which uses the EU power system, will not connect. In addition, it's very happy, very helpful to have a crescent hammer. This will work in everything but IC2, but rather than using an axe to remove the items, you can just shift and then right click and the items will just immediately drop off. The same with the machines. You can pick them up quite quickly. Industrial Craft 2, however, does have its own wrench. However, this wrench is more important because you can pick the items up, much like I've just explained. However, if we were to 
destroy one of these items. You'll note that the item just disappeared. And we're back. Back from a successful mining trip. Where I picked up some ores. And, before I left, I rearranged the room a little bit to tidy things up. Clean things up. And I made a bit of a con con contraption here. This machine is a combination of various different things. We've got our generator for IC, uh, um, Industrial Craft 2. A bat box for keeping a reserve of power for when I run out of coal and I don't realise it. That goes into our induction smelter. Which has a lever on it, so that's always running and taking power. I do need to keep the generator full with coal. I also have a signal from Endor.io configured to take items from a chest. There are some um, conduits running underneath the floor here, which have been hidden. They are coming from the the mechanism wind turbines out here as you can see the cable or the conduit running the whole way it goes into a leadstone energy cell which provides a um, battery backup for when the windmills are not generating and I'm using the equipment and all we've got to do to smelt our items up is plop all the items the ores into here that will be taken into the segment, converted into the appropriate items. They will then be thrown into the induction furnace and smelted very quickly. A logistical transporter from mechanism then takes the items out and sticks it into this chest. Meaning that all I have to do when I get back is place the items into this chest and they'll be smelted and converted into doubled ingots. This is an example setup of how you can automate this whole process to get yourself double the ingots very easily. So, on that note, I think we'll end it here. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, or, and, or you've learned anything, please do leave a like. If you would like me to cover off the power options in more detail, or any of the mods that I've given that I've covered, please leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe for future videos for this and other Minecraft topics. But for now, see ya. Thank you.